I'd like to walk through six trades that illustrate how the open interest is calculated on a futures exchange. So I'd like to show you how open interest is calculated on a futures exchange. This is a common measurement in financial exams that for some reason I always struggled with. I thought it would be fun to illustrate how the open interest is calculated by using a practice question that I wrote for our members. And it just imagines six trades among six hypothetical traders at the futures exchange that I named, who I named, Albert, Barb, Chris, Don, Aaron, Fred. That's for A, B, C, D, E, F. And so I start with the first trade where Albert takes a long position in 300 futures contracts. And so that's each a contract. Let's say the underlying commodity is corn. Each contract has a size. In the case of corn, corn futures contract is for 5,000 bushels per contract. So Albert, if Albert takes a long position in 300 contracts, that's 5,000 bushels times 300 contracts equals 1.5 million bushels. And so entering into a long position, that makes Albert a buyer. And Albert is making a promise, a contractual obligation to purchase 1.5 million bushels of corn in the future at the predetermined price, which is the delivery price for this contract. So there needs to be a matching seller. And in my first trade, trader Barbara is the seller. And so I'm going to represent that with another 300. And Barb has entered into a short position in the futures contract which is to say that Barb is promising to deliver 1.5 million bushels of corn in the future at the same predetermined delivery price. Now, a buyer and a seller do need to match. This 300 Albert's buying needs to find a seller in Barb or somebody else. If this were over the counter, these would be forward contracts and Albert and Barb would be direct counterparties. In a futures exchange, the exchange novates that the, these contracts such that what really happens here is the exchange becomes the counterparty and there are two contracts. So Albert has a contract with the exchange as the counterparty and so does Barb. However, it remains the case that a buyer needs to match a seller and it's the price mechanism that ensures that when there's an imbalance, more demand than supply or vice versa, it's the price that will increase or drop to ensure that there are buyers for sellers and vice versa. So this first trade involved two new traders opening new positions. And you can see here, I have the open interest is 300 because the open interest is simply the either the number of open long positions or equivalently the number of short positions. It's not the, it's not 600 in this case. It's not 300 plus 300. It's just the 300 and the number of open longs needs to match the number of open shorts. Okay. So my second trade is similar just to keep illustrating. I'm going to assume that trip trader Chris opens a new long position in 250 contracts and that the matching seller is Don who is a entering a short position for 250 contracts. Chris and Don both opened new positions and so the open interest increased by 250 from 300 to 550. Okay now my trade three in this case Albert who is sitting on or is holding 300 open long, a long position in 300 contracts decides to close out his positions, which I represent with a negative 300. And so this is um, by far the majority of futures contracts are closed out prior to maturity. They do not go, they do not go all the way to delivery. And that's because most of the shorts most of the traders who are in our short positions don't actually want to collect or receive the commodity. So most of our traders are going to close out the position prior to maturity, which is an offset. So Albert had in this first trade, Albert had 300 long, a position in 300 long contracts. And so the offset is effectively a sale. 
it, it, hopefully, in Albert's case, the forward price or the futures price increased in the meantime, so it's a cash settlement for the gain, but this will extinguish these 300 contracts. So his original long is offset by a sale. That sale needs to have a corresponding or matching buyer. And so I, in my trade three here, I just imagined that the matching buyer is Aaron, who opens a new contract for the same number, 300. And so in this case, Aaron is a new contract, but Albert is just offsetting. And you'll notice that the open interest does not change. The open interest doesn't change if one of the buyers or sellers is opening a new position, but the other one is offsetting. So trade four is similar. In this case, Chris is going to, Chris who has an open long position in 250 contracts, is going to close out half of his position, which is a sale of 125 of 125 contracts. And Fred is going to be the new long who opens a new position for 125 contracts. So trade four is similar to trade three. Fred is a new contract, but Chris was offsetting half of his position the open interest does not change. Trade five, Aaron, who has an open long position in 300 contracts, decides to sell or close out half of her position. So that's 100, negative 150. And so this was a, this is a sale of the long position and the corresponding buyer is going to be Barb, who is closing out half of her position. But in Barb's case, right, if we go back here, Aaron is selling half of her long position, closing out. So the match to that is a buyer, which is in Barb's case, she was short 300 contracts. So to close out her short position, she's a buyer. So in this trade, notice the open interest went from 550 down to 400. When both of the buyer and seller are offsetting existing contracts, the open interest is reduced. Trade six is the final trade. And this is the final this is the fourth of the four different scenarios that can happen. In this case, notice Barb, she started with a short in 300 contracts, a short position. She purchased 150 to close out half of her position. So she remains short 150 contracts. And when I wrote the question, what I say here is that let's assume Barbara just forgets to close out like most traders do. If Barbara forgets, she's short. Remember, she has to deliver. So Barbara's going to deliver, in this case, 150 times 5,000 bushels of corn, and will be paid the delivery price for that. Well, delivery extinguishes the contract. And so that is a minus 150 here. And Aaron, who is the long position on that contract, will see her contracts reduced by 150. And you can see that in this um, final scenario, the open interest declined by from 400 to 250 by 150. So this, this um, trade hopefully is most intuitive. Delivery fulfillment of the contract reduces the open interest. So that at the end of these six trades, Chris has 125, still has 125, a long position in 125 contracts. That's because he was long 250, um, closed out half of that. So 125 remain. Fred is still open his 125. That's a total of 250. And so that's the open interest. And the number of shorts would equal that. So those are the four. And let me just recap the four. My fir the four combinations. My first two trades here were um, both the buyer and the seller were opening new contracts. 
if both the buyer and the seller open new contracts, that's an increase in the open interest. That's creating new long and new short contracts. My second two trades here were one of the buyers and sellers is opening a new contract, but the other one is offsetting. That has zero effect on the open interest. I'm going to make sure that's an up arrow there. My third combination or scenario here was both traders are offsetting existing contracts, and that is a decrease in the open interest. And the final scenario here is actually just fulfillment or delivery of the contract, which extinguishes the contract and similarly decreases the open interest. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you.